Hello everybody! In today's video, we will be taking a close look at a water flea. And right off the bat, I must make it clear, the nickname water flea applies to a large group of animals, generally of the order Cladocera. These small aquatic animals share the nickname water fleas because of their jerky, jumping, swimming style. And they're very distantly related to actual fleas. With that out of the way, our sexy little friend down there is called Daphnia. The genus Daphnia includes more than a hundred species of freshwater organisms found around the world, with adults ranging from less than one millimeter up to five millimeters in size. Daphnia populations can be found in a range of water bodies, from huge lakes down to very small temporary pools, such as rock pools. Often, they are the dominant zooplankton and form, as such, an essential part of the food web in lakes and ponds. And in many lakes, they are the predominant food for planktivorous fish. Daphnia feed on small suspended particles in the water, earning the nickname suspension feeders. The food is gathered using flattened leaf-like legs that produce a water current. As the current flows anterior to posterior, the Daphnia collect particles that are transferred into the food groove by special setae. This feeding mechanism is so efficient that even bacteria can be collected, although they much prefer green algae, especially unicellular green algae. And in the lab, you can always keep them happy with a steady diet of yeast. Daphnia has an interesting physiology. Actually, they don't. Even a con artist can't dress this one up. Not even with a fancy name like open blood circulation, which basically means they have no veins, just hemolymph flowing throughout the body cavity. The heart is located dorsally, which is ugly if you ask me, and it's so small it beats 200 times per minute at 20 C. Not that I care, not that you care for that matter. So allow me to waste a full minute of your life counting the heartbeat of a water flea. Just kidding. I wouldn't have that on my conscience. Their nervous system is characterized by the cerebral ganglion. By that, I mean two or three pairs of ganglia, located somewhere around here, close to the gut and near the eye. Yes, the eye. As far as I know, all Daphnia, uncool Daphnia, have one big compound eye. Except mine, of course. Mine has two, as you can no doubt see. I credit this to me being cool. Therefore, it is only natural that my Daphnia should be a cool two-eyed Daphnia instead of an ugly, generic Cyclops. Of course, I'm not going to scientifically explain the two-eyes phenomenon. Beat it, nerds. I wanted to finish the video by talking about the life cycle of a Daphnia, but I couldn't be bothered. Just look it up on Wikipedia. Basically, when it's all fine and dandy, the female Daphnia reproduce all by herself, making eggs that hatch into a bunch of other female Daphnias and the cycle continues. But when push comes to shove and the food is scarce so the pond starts to dry, some of the eggs hatch into males. The males bone a bunch of the females, resulting in an egg called a resting egg that can survive for years before hatching, thus ensuring the continuity of the species. Now the question remains, is Daphnia so important to waste precious minutes of your life watching a video on YouTube about it? The answer is, of course they are! Just read the rest of the script that I couldn't be bothered to narrate about the ecological importance of Daphnia.